It takes a heck of a long time to earn money in Grand Theft Auto 5 Online, and you can waste almost all of it on a $10 million yacht. In today's video, I'll be going over the worst purchases you can ever make in Grand Theft Auto 5 Online. I'm not going to be doing like a top 10 or whatever like most YouTubers do. I'm just going to be going over the worst purchases in general, and then you can let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But let's get straight into it. Let's start off with the most obvious of all choices, the Luxor Deluxe and the Swift Deluxe. Both of these vehicles cost in total $15 million if you wanted to own them. Now sure, if your account got modded and you have hundreds of millions of dollars to waste or you've just earned that much, then sure, this is a vehicle that you can purchase not really caring. But judging that, I just called in my Luxor Deluxe and then right next to me is a normal Swift Deluxe that I can just get from the airport, does the same thing, same speed, you can even drink the same champagne out of the back. In my my opinion it is literally the most useless vehicle you can ever buy I mean sure it'll get you from point A to point B but so can every helicopter and everything else and that's also the same case for the Swift Deluxe a five million dollar helicopter that does the same thing your two million dollar Sparrow can except you don't have any anti-missile countermeasures and you don't have any weapons in the first place another awful purchase when it comes to planes is the Titan you can literally spawn a Titan every time you go to the airport, as you can see here, and it'll drop you $2 million if you buy one and put it in your hangar for some reason, taking up all of your hangar space in the process. Yeah, in my opinion, almost any expensive helicopter or plane you do not need is a terrible waste of money, like the Nimbus, the Millijet. Keeping it up with the terrible air vehicles, we have the R-86 Alkanost. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his vehicle's name. It's a Russian stealth bomber, part of the KO Perico heist, and it's going to drop you $3 million. A terrible purchase, the R-10 Bombushka, another terrible purchase for four and a half million that's gonna really accomplish nothing in an online session or whenever you'd want to use it. And then we also have the Volatile, a $2.8 million bomber plane that does literally everything this plane does for 300,000 cheaper and it's still completely useless. All of these planes have basically no goal. They drop bombs, they don't have any stealth mode whatsoever. It is completely a waste of money. You can buy a Rogue, drop the same bombs, and do everything the same, but, you know, have an explosive minigun and do literally everything better and more efficiently. And the final flying vehicle we have on today's video is the Laser, a $6.5 million jet that you can get for absolutely free. The Laser is a vehicle that will spawn every single time you go to the Fort Zancudo military base. And if you have enough money to drop on a Laser, it also means you have enough money to drop on a hangar in Fort Zancudo. Buy the hangar and then you literally get no wanted level going inside the military base. Just steal yourself a laser, sure. You can't spawn it next to you if you're in the city, but I mean, if that's your biggest problem, you have to drive two minutes out to the military base, then yeah, I mean, at that point, you've got enough money to waste on whatever you want. This jet, you can steal for free. Not to mention, you can buy a Hydra, which has the ability to hover, unlike the laser, and it flies faster than the laser with the exact same missiles and explosive minigun for half the price. It's $3 million for a Hydra. There is no joke no reason to buy a laser in 2022. There was no reason to buy a laser before you could even buy a laser because you could still own a Hydra. I mean, the jet's cool and it's kind of cool to be able to respray it and spawn it near you, but really, is it is it really worth the price of six and a half million? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on to the next one. Let's be real, we all knew this was going to make the list at some point in this video, and that is the Galaxy Super Yacht, a $10 million floating apartment, and that's all I really think of mine as. And not even a good floating apartment, because you have to fly a helicopter to get over shore, compared to you can just spawn in your office building and, you know, drive your car on the ground, unlike the yacht, you can't. Yeah, the problem with the yacht, there's a couple things. First of all, it's a lot of money for something that has very little fun. I mean, sure, you first First buy, you have a lot of fun, you invite your friends over, you can do a couple missions here and there. Like, Yacht Takeover is pretty fun, but eh, I mean, after you do it a couple times, you don't really do it ever again. The other problem with the Super Yacht, you can't drive it. You can drive the Kosatka, and it's cool to drive the Kosaka, but imagine how cool it would be to drive the Yacht and just beach it on land or try and smash into your friend's vehicles. 
That would honestly almost make it worth the price for me if you could just drive this thing, because that would be so cool. Sure, you can fast travel, but you can also do that with the so Kosatka, and it cost less money on the Kosatka. Overall, I really don't see a reason for this vehicle. I mean, sure, it looks cool. You can show off to your friends, but... Yeah, the only thing you're showing off is that you have really poor judgment on how to spend your money, because $10 million down the drain, woo, that's not the best decision. Next up on the list, we have a vehicle cargo warehouse. Now, you might be asking, why is this on the list? It's actually a pretty decent way to make money, especially if you're new to the game. Yes, it can be okay. You're making about 80000 every 20 minutes, except that's what every YouTuber says until you add into the factor of, you know, if you crash the vehicle or get shot even once, you have to pay for that damage. And not to mention, vehicle cargo storage is not cheap. It's like $1.5 million for the cheapest of all the warehouses, which you can see here, the La Mesa. And if you buy a more expensive one, they go up to $3 million. And the real problem I have with vehicle cargo is down to the fact that you can own an agency. The cheapest agency cost $2 million. And that's not that much more than the cheapest vehicle warehouse. And judging that the agency not only has a passive income, which you can see here, I'm just gonna get a free $250,000 out of my agency vault for completing contract hits every now and then and getting a passive income of 20,000, but as well, the agency has payphone hits. As you can see here, call for a payphone hit. I'm gonna make 85 grand from completing this payphone hit. And it's gonna take me in total four minutes and 40 seconds to complete the payphone hit. And how long is the cooldown you might ask? Oh yeah, that's right, 20 minutes. There is no reason to own a vehicle warehouse when you can make more money with the agency while not having any stress of crashing the vehicle, it getting shot at, blown up. It is so easy to do payphone hits every 20 minutes, make 85 grand. And by the way, you can still do contract missions while you're waiting for your agency cooldown. I mean, there's really no reason to buy a vehicle cargo. For the final vehicle in Grand Theft Auto 5 Online, I have one simple question for you. Is there ever a time you have once said to yourself, ah yeah, I think it'd be really fun if me and a couple friends drove boats around GTA shores. Like, nobody ever says that, and that is why almost every boat in GTA is quite useless, especially when you add in the fact that vehicles like the Toreador exist that is a boat, but, you know, it can also go underwater and have torpedoes and a super speed boost that lets you jump out of the water like a dolphin. I really just see zero reason to ever own any sort of boat. The tugboat is by far the most useless. Not only does it cost $1.35 million, but there is actually no use for it unless you want to get like shot down from a fighter jet But every boat I find is actually useless the PBR boat kind of cool except for the fact that it is incredibly slow and again Very expensive. I mean, I, I just don't get it. There's no reason Please don't waste your money on boats unless I mean I guess you have a goal for them, but yeah, I, they're just kind of useless. You can see what I think of my tugboat right here. <laughs> so this is my list of the most useless vehicles and purchases you can make in Grand Theft Auto Online. Sure, there are other purchases you can probably make that are a heck of a lot worse. I think buying a six and a half million dollar penthouse in the casino is quite a bad idea. And there's a lot of other bad purchases out there, but I think that these are the worst of the worst you can make. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. But other than that, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Bye-bye.